Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody. Another video here. I'm just in the forums on module two and I know this is a great question from Karen Lyons around the conversation about making the poses their own. Um, your first instinct, Karen, is always correct that we ask the students to move in a way that feels good in their body. So if we've empowered them through language by allowing them to move where they need to move and move how they need to move and use what's available to them, a lot of your students, if they've been practicing with you for a while and understand agency that you've created for them, then they'll move in a way and they'll find the props and they'll help themselves. I find that from teaching my classes, that's what happens. I go to um, introduce a pose and I notice the people who automatically get the props that they need and get there. And there's no sense of they're not doing it right or that they're not included. So I'm really grateful that that's the space that we've created. And if you've created that as well, you'll see that happen in your classes or when you start to create that, you'll see that happen in your classes. The question that Karen Lyons had for me today is, how do we make sure our students are safe as they are moving into their own particular version of the pose? And I really go back to my alignment training that I had with my 200 hour teacher training. I was fortunate enough to train um, in the Anasara school, which is a huge alignment school. And I've also had opportunities to practice and take workshops with Iyengar teachers. So. I follow the basic principles that I've learned in that training. So when I'm looking at them, I'm making sure that their knees aren't overextended or hyperextended. I'm looking to make sure that their joints are facing the right way. I'm looking to make sure that there's muscle engagement in the pose or their variation of the pose. And if that's not happening once they get where they're going, then I quietly come up ask for their permission to help better um, refine the pose for them or to make the pose a little more comfortable or accessible for them. And that's the language I use. I'm gonna come in and make this, um, or do you need more sensation? Make this a little more luxurious. These are the things that I say. But I'm observing the overall shape of the pose and keeping in mind that it's following the correct alignment principles that we have been taught in our 200 hours. And then I also default to how does this feel for them, right? When I come up to them, I'm, you know, using the language better or worse, or are you having pain anywhere, or is anything uncomfortable? And then identifying what the discomfort is. Is it a discomfort because they're stretching something that's really tight, or is it a sharp shooting pain that lets us know that something is out of alignment? So communication is key for identifying whether your student is um, students variation of the pose is effective and safe in their body and being observant you know once you give people the time to get to the pose stop take four or five breaths and observe if they're twitching or there's a lot of um, shifting then clearly something's going on and you need to go up and make have a conversation on a student by student basis so Karen I hope this helps if there's any further questions around this or if there's something you'd like to add please weigh in on the forum I love the questions and I love the uh, medium of video for me. I like to talk a lot and sometimes writing just gets to be too long and too much to read. So thank you for the questions in the forum and if you have any other questions, post them here. I hope you found that helpful. I'll look forward to your feedback. Have a great day, everyone.